Fusome, whose name means keeper of ritual, is one of the most notable voices in African spirituality. A respected author, lecturer, and activist, she has traveled throughout the world to share the rich spiritual life and culture of her native land, Burkina Faso. Although it ranks as one of the poorest countries in the world, it is one of the richest nations when measured in terms of spiritual life and custom. Recognized by the village elders as possessing special gifts from birth, so Bonfu's destiny was fostered by early education in ritual and preparation for her life's work, which she describes as a journey in self-discovery and in building community through rituals. So Bonfu created Wisdom Spring, an organization dedicated to the preservation and sharing of indigenous wisdom. Subanfu so says that because Westerners typically think of gifts as material goods, most devote precious little time and attention to seeking the real reason that they are born into this world. It's Subanfu's belief that everyone has a gift that is vital to the well being of the individual and to the community. Please welcome to the Connecting for Change stage, Sabanfu Sone. Thank you. Good morning. How are you this morning? How are you? All right. That's what I want to hear. It really is a joy for me to be here at this Connecting for Change. And you know what? That we only think that work. Unless we connect, nothing changes. And um, it is through those changes that those magical things can spark in our life and to really make us who we are. And um, I just want to say that the um, last uh, speaker, um, Mark was right on the point that there is a lot that is wrong with us. It's not that um, something is wrong with us, to, so to say, but there is something definitely wrong with society. The way it is set up, the way it works, and so on. And so um, I just want to take a moment to talk about why we are here. In my culture, Vidagra uh, culture, we are all born here because we have something unique to bring. If you go to Africa, those people don't look any fabulous. They're just regular indigenous people running crazy. You know, they share everything. Their meals, they cook together, they eat together, they share their clothes. There's no such a thing as personal toy. It's a communal toy. Everything is together. But from the Western eyes, those people are very poor. Um, in fact, they might be decrepit because that's what we like indigenous people to look. But when you look deeper, you actually see that these people are happy. They're not happy because they have a huge house. They're not, they're not happy because they have a huge bank account but they're happy because they have one another, and that is their bank account. In my village, if you don't have many people you are connected to, you are considered to be very poor. And, um, and that poorness has a way of eating away at your life, at your happiness, at who you are, and at your capacity to bring your gift out in the world. And um, we have a lot of young people in this room, and I really love that because it is what makes this world really go forward. Why? Because the children are our past, they are our present, and they are our future. We are growing old, but you are the leaders of tomorrow. And so I really want you to hear when I say that you are here for a reason, I really want you to take that in. You are not an accident. 
you are not just some thought or some um, concoction of your parent. You are here because you are a well, healthy, powerful being who is bringing their gift, something unique to the world. It doesn't matter how you're born. It doesn't matter where you're born or who you are born to. What is important is that you have chosen to bring something unique in this world. And that's why the circumstances in your life talk about who you are and those gifts. Some of them may be more difficult to chew. Some of them may be more difficult to bear for these little poor bodies that we carry. However, if there is a way for us to transform what we have gone through, there is such an abundance of wisdom and power that we can derive from those situations. And I say that because in my tradition, before we come here, we all go into the spirit office, this office of the goddesses and the gods, whatever you want to name it. And we actually send out a plan, you know, just like a dissertation. This is what I'm going to do in the world. And based on what we um, present, they put their stamp of approval. So your coming here is backed by all the goddesses, all the gods, by all your ancestors, and by all the spirit. So you're not just coming here by yourself. You are backed by powerful forces. At which point, you then choose where are you going to be born to? I know some of us we were swearing that our parents could not be our parents. Somebody must have switched us from the crib because they don't look like parents to us. And you're right, because the people we choose to be born to are supposed to give us gentle reminder of why we are here. But some people take it as a license to kill. True, and so as a result, a lot of us become very wounded and it becomes very difficult to see why we are here. And so as we grow, this suit we take on called the body, it has a tendency to make us forget. And so that's why when we become teenagers, the maddening things have to happen. We have to become crazy to try to break those limitations so that we can begin to actually let that gift shine. And I know that in the West, you know, being uh, adolescents, they call it, you know, an illness, some kind of disease, as if it is fatal. But actually, I say that adolescence is the beginning of the sharing of who we are and our gift. It is the time when we basically start to say, okay, enough of what the world is saying. This is what I have to say. It's just like, you know, when you're making that nice smoothie in the morning and you put it in the blender, it doesn't just sit still and come out being a nice smoothie. Come on, for heaven's sake. It goes crazy. You know, go, oh. and then at the end, you taste it, you go, oh, yes. In the same way, as teenagers, we have to become crazy like those ingredients in the uh, blender so that whatever is in us or whatever is creating limitations in our life can be shaken off so that the gift can begin to shine. Whether you go through that as a teenager, which is the initiation we all need, or later on in life, because you cannot escape from initiation. The first initiation we all born in, we all go through is that of being born, and the um, fifth year. It's not an accident that at the end of the fifth year you can either see the spirit of this child beginning to shine or beginning to die. And so, what really creates a lot of a limitation in our capacity to bring our gift is the lack of community. 
and the prior speaker was talking about the social disease. We are not ill because our body give up. We are ill because the connections in our lives do not work. The circles in which we function all need to function for our well-being. Our nuclear family is just one of those circles. Our spiritual community is just one of those circles. The city, the state where we are born is just one of those connections. The, uh, the um, uh, un uh, um, country and the universe, those are all different connections. And those different circles are interconnected so that we can be well. And when one of those circles breaks, we feel it. Some of us are always in tears at what is happening in the world. It's not because we are just crybaby, but it's because we are seeing how our life is becoming in danger because one of circle, those circles is breaking. And that's why we feel it so strongly. And so when we don't have healthy connections, when we don't have our community, when we don't have family really seeing who we are, we begin to be sick to say something is not working. And that's why in my tradition, there's no such a thing as a personal problem. There's no such a thing as a personal grief. A grief is collective. A grief is the problem of the community not dealt with. And that's why we feel it. So in America, I know that people love to own their problem. This is my problem. The challenge with that is that when we own a problem, it then becomes very difficult to heal or for us to even be able to step back from it, to take a good look at it, and to decide whether this is something we want to keep or not. And therefore, it becomes difficult for us to let it go. A problem arises to address break, broken connections. And that's why when you go to my tribe, if they see you sitting by yourself, they take it as meaning that you have spotted something which is not working in the community, and you're sitting by yourself to say, we need to talk. And so people will come and they will sit by you. And if one person sits and you don't say anything, they take it as meaning, oh, this is so big that we need more people. So they'll go get more people. <laughs> and so if you go to my village, you are going to have a challenge because, you know, this is how they function. You know, they think that anytime someone isolates themselves, there is a problem in the community. So, so much for the uh, Western sense of uh, I need my personal uh, space or my personal time. Doesn't work there. Um, and so, so in order for us to begin to embrace the gifts that we have brought, we have to begin to mend our relationship with our communities. We have, begin, we have to start to create healthy connections. And I'm not talking in the kind of connection where you just sit and gossip. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about connections that nurture who you are, welcome who you are without taking part of you, but connections that take you fully in. You see, a lot of us, we talk about the fact that we are not really here. We are not here because we have never been welcome. And when you are not welcome, you cannot arrive. And so when you don't arrive, you cannot deliver the gifts that you have brought. And so we, we, we address it in terms of acceptance. You know, um, to be accepted is different from being tolerated. Those are two separate things. You only tolerate someone because you don't know what else to do not to kill the person. <laughs> yeah? But to accept someone means to take them in as they are, 
without any need to change them. And when you take someone, you give them home. Home for themselves and home for their gift. It is actually an invitation for their gift. And when you invite that gift, then they have permission for that gift to, sh to shine. But when you don't have that invitation, then you kind of tiptoe around to try to see who, who, who is going to really accept this gift. So if you can really imagine all of us kind of like running around like UPS drivers, you know, with 10,000 gifts in those cars. And when we go to deliver them at people's home, they look at it, they go, that's the right address, but I don't want it. And so they hand it back to you and you take it, but you begin to notice the weight of the gift. So that is another reason why a lot of us get sick. Thank you, whoever sneezes. Um, in my tradition, they say that uh, when you are thinking about something or when you are talking about something and someone sneezes, it's spirit way of saying, right on. So that's why you thank them. <laughs> a, a lot of us get sick because our gifts are never invited. Our gifts are never welcome. And so as a result, the gift become a force that has an appetite. And that appetite begins to eat away at who we are. And that's why we become sick. And so to reverse that sickness, we need to basically begin to learn to welcome ourselves because everybody seems to be in some kind of initiation where they don't even know that someone else is around. You know, all they know is them. You know, I'm fighting for my survival. I'm fighting for my survival because the gift in me needs to be born and I don't know how to even begin to let it be born. And so as a result, I am just jumping around. So all this um, uh, uh, hunger for speed, all this hunger for, um, you know, entertainment is not because, you know, there isn't anything better, but it is because the power of a gift is so strong that we don't know what else to do not to go crazy. And that's why we have to medicate ourselves in other ways so that we can begin to function as society expects us. Another way of beginning to um, reclaim your gift is to begin to notice the difference between making a living and living a purpose. Society has successfully taught us that to live our purpose is useless. The only thing worth living is for us to actually um, make a living. And so we realize that that is not doing it. So they had to come up with retirement to at least give us some hope. So that when we retire, we can actually begin to live our purpose. Except that most of us, when we retire, we're so happy that we excite ourselves to the other world. So it doesn't mean that to make a living means you have to also put your gift aside. How many people in this room, you know, when you were a child, you wanted to do something and your parents go, that's not going to put food on your table. And you have to sacrifice those gifts. That means also sacrificing your own life. And then when you go crazy, they wonder why you're going crazy. Don't stop listening to that gift. Still hold it dear. Make it happen whichever way you can. Use your weekend, use your night, it's important. Another way to begin to welcome your gift is also find people who are just as crazy as you are. <laughs> At least you know that they know what it means not to be able to deliver your gifts. So you can begin to create the healthy connections among each other so that you can begin to bring that gift out in the world. Because without people who believe in who you are and what your gift is about, you will spend your entire life wishing you had done it. 
until you exit, and then you come, you get to the spirit world. I said, so how was it? You said, well, I got distracted, and I stopped believing in myself, so I didn't do it. So I said, go back. <laughs> um, so it's very important that when that fire, that light in you, which the gift uh, uh, bring um, uh, in you, begin to tickle, begin to warm you up, begin to drive you crazy, that you listen to it because it is important. You are not a tourist. You are not coming here just to be the trash can of other people. You are not here because you need to be molded by the world. No, you are here because you are a gift and you need to shine no matter what. Even in your darkest days, you must be willing to say, I matter and this gift I want to bring in, in the world and to believe in that no matter what. So that when someone puts you down, that you can still look at the gift and you look at yourself and you say, that's how you feel, but I know better. And I'm not going to let you stop me from being who I am or bringing my gift in the world. And I really want you to take this because without us insisting on the health and the importance of our gift, the world will take us on a circus and then we will lose why we are here. So children, you are the best gift that this world has. And I believe in you. So thank you.